Space Engineers has a forgotten feature. And whilst all of you might know it exists, it's forgotten because of the fact that most of you don't use it. So if you go onto the main menu of the game, you click new game, and then you click up, oh, you've missed it. You see, Space Engineers' forgotten feature is the scenarios. But before I can explain to you why scenarios are forgotten, you first need to have an understanding of each of the scenarios. So I'm gonna go through all of them now. First jump is basically the demo of Space Engineers. It's kind of a mix of the tutorial of Space Engineers showing the most basic features of the game, but also showing off in a fun action-packed adventure. The scenario starts on a station and you have to explore the station before it comes under attack, and then you have to escape the station. Once you've escaped the station, you land on the moon and you have to then explore a moon base where you find that the owners of the moon base have found some sort of ancient relic underground. You're then attacked by drones and then you have to use uh, the handguns. Uh. Then once you get there, you escape the moon and are met by the people that blow up the space station. After they explain it was a misunderstanding that they shot the space station you were on, they then take you down to their base where they ask you to repair a ship which you then take into battle. The battle section is fairly short, it just features you shooting some rockets at the ship until it explodes. But with the amount of ships on the screen it does feel bigger than it actually is. After that you're dropped onto Mars in a tank and you have to fight your way to a facility. Or in my case my tank got damaged and I had to walk to the facility instead. After you enter the facility you have a climactic battle against multiple drones until the final boss appears. Now I will admit I did spend 5 minutes laughing after the final boss hit the wall during his cutscene and broke his front weapons but aside from that this all went pretty smoothly. Once you beat the boss you find the artifact and then you're teleported away to the end credits. The latter three acts of this are definitely the best. The first act is pretty slow with you just walking around and learning the basic mechanics of the game. And the second act makes you use the rifle and oh, Space Engineers really needs an overhaul to ground combat. Now I will say there is a lot of text on screen and I was struggling to keep up where I was supposed to be reading. Whilst these tutorial sections are in the top left like they are on the base game tutorial, which we covered in a previous video, the actual story information is all on the chat box and there's just so much text there. Just a little bit of voice acting to read it out would help massively. Or maybe just colour coding keywords in the text because I was really struggling to keep up with it. Like I said at the beginning this feels like a demo of the game and that's because it shows you all of the basic features of the game and gets you straight into the action and it'd be a great way to get new players into the game by playing this and saying look this is everything the game offers so if you enjoy what you see this is the game for you. Learning to survive is the actual tutorial of the game. Now I think it's intended that you play first jump first because that shows you the more basic mechanics of the game but they are also relayed in this. Now learning to survive as I've covered in my previous video teaches you basically all the main mechanics of the game aside from one but you'll have to watch my previous video to find out what that is. Now I've said all the things I like and dislike about this tutorial in that video as well but for the most part no this is probably one of the best methods of teaching new players how to play the game. Never Surrender starts like any other game of Space Engineers where you're spawned into a system and you have to survive. The only difference with Never Surrender is that when you spawn in you're given a waypoint to a station and once you go to that station you're attacked by endless waves of drones. Because it drops you into a new solar system it expects you to survive and build like you would in a normal survival game of Space Engineers and then once you're ready then you travel to that waypoint. I played this twice, once with my friends and once where I cheated horribly for the recording of this video. And whilst it is really fun to play, I will say I did have a couple of issues that I'll mention here. I think my main issue is that the waves take too long because there's an achievement for this for doing a hundred waves of this and it feels like each wave takes a lot longer than it should be. There's two minutes between waves which you have to kill everything on that wave and then the two minutes timer will start, which is sometimes an issue but we'll get to that. Now there is a button that immediately skips that two minute timer. That means you have to fly your ship back to the asteroid base, press the button and then you have five seconds to then get back into your ship and get ready for the next wave. There just needs to be an easier way of doing this. Maybe an endless mode where you just press it and it just sends all the waves after every minute so I don't have to keep going back and pressing that button. The second issue I have is that sometimes it doesn't detect when a drone is disabled. I'm not sure exactly when it considers a drone to be disabled, but I had cases when I'd taken out the antenna of a drone and I'd taken out enough of its thrusters that it couldn't fly properly and it would just fly off into the distance never to be seen again and because it didn't have an antenna I had no way of finding it so the wave wouldn't go on. Now there is an easy way to fix this, all you have to do is save the world, go out and back in and then it skips the next wave, which is annoying but fine if you play single player. But if you're in multiplayer, which I was in the original attempt I did of this, it can be annoying to have to rehost the game every time the wave doesn't end properly. I think an easy fix would just be to say that if they get a certain distance away from the player, they just despawn and then it moves on the wave. But honestly that's a minor issue, this scenario is very fun, especially with friends. Lost Colony is one of the two story based scenarios in Space Engineers and with it being a story scenario it's also one of the biggest scenarios in Space Engineers. You start in a valley populated with lots of buildings for you to explore. This valley was host to a colony of 60 people and this colony lost contact so it's up to you to find out what happened. There's a variety of buildings dotted around the map and as you explore you find data pads with listed locations of ores and loot. Now I will say during my exploration I did get distracted a little bit by the disco room. I mean who can avoid a disco room especially with everyone's favourite space in this tune. And whilst I'm distracted by the disco room I'm also going to distract you by asking you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. 
Over time, as you progress through the story of the map, new areas will open up, unraveling the mysteries of what happened. But just know that this isn't a quick process. You're expected to go around the world and find components or mine ores to make components, to repair things such as survival kits and assemblers and stuff, so that you can complete this scenario. Which means you're basically playing Space Engineer Survival alongside the actual story part of this which is what takes the time, you actually having to play the survival while also doing the story. However, if you want to play normal Space Engineers with a fun story on the side, this is definitely the scenario for you. Good morning, Engineer. I hope you slept well. Frostbite is the second story-based scenario, and whilst it's more linear than the open-ended nature of Lost Colony, I'm going to say right now, I think this is the better one. For starters, this one has voice acting, which is weird in Space Engineers, I will say that. However, having the game just tell me things rather than it all appear on my screen or in notes that I have to read, definitely a better way to engage me with their content. Frostbite, as you can imagine, takes place on the world of Triton, and it's again full of bases for you to explore. However, the map is more linear, expecting you to go from place to place throughout your adventure, However, whilst Lost Colony does have lots of hostile encounters in it, Frostbite takes it to the next level with rogue AI attacking you throughout your adventure. You might notice that I don't have a lot of footage for the Frostbite scenario, and that's because as soon as I left the starting area, the rover I'd spent so long preparing was completely destroyed by one of those AI, and my auto save loaded me back a good 10 to 20 minutes, so I decided to leave it there. In order to complete this scenario, you have to find four data containers and bring them back to the place where you started, and that gets you an achievement, which only 0.2% of players have. Like I said at the beginning, I personally prefer Frostbite to Lost Colony, as having set goals and objectives of where to go is definitely more my style than open-ended exploration like in Lost Colony. However, both scenarios are both very good and worth a playthrough at least once. I'm not sure that Sparks of the Future actually is a scenario. I think it's just a really cool map. The map has five stations with monorails and shuttles between them, and each of these space stations hold a variety of different rooms for you to explore, such as the Church of Clang, the Disco Room, which I may or may not have got distracted by again. You know what happens at this point, just, you know, do the thing. A shooting gallery, and those are just a couple of the cool things I found while exploring this base. Whilst this is definitely a very cool map, why is this a scenario? It's definitely more detailed than the normal maps that are included in Space Engineers, scenarios aside. But the scenarios are more for different gameplay methods, and this is just, like I said, a cool map for you to explore. So I guess it's not really a scenario, but why don't you guys let me know what you think? Uranium Heist is a multiplayer PvP map where you have to collect resources to repair an escape pod and you gain points for your team for stealing uranium from the centre of the map. Now being forced to use the handguns aside, this is actually a really cool way to use all the Space Engineers' mechanics in a PvP environment. For starters, you don't just need the resources to repair your escape pod, you can also use the resources that you can get to repair things around the map to give you access to new areas. For example, if you repair this timer block here, it unlocks a boost which jumps you across the map. And you can also repair ladders around the map to allow you to climb up to different sections. And repairing this timer block here activates an elevator that will take you up to the high ground. Picking up uranium also prevents you from sprinting and it puts a marker on you wherever you are on the map, allowing other players to see where you are. Now, this PvP scenario does require 12 players, and as you can see from my recording, the red team is doing very well, thank you. But, like I said, I think this map is really cool and I'd love to give it a try, especially with you guys. So, if you'd like to play this map, you can join my Discord with the link in the description below. Scrap Race is the second multiplayer scenario, this time being a multiplayer race. Once again, you can see, I came first place in this race because I'm just so good at multiplayer racing. Don't look at my vehicle rolling. The scenario gives you a bunch of pre-built rovers to use, with the ability to modify them, although I'm sure you could just spawn in your own rovers and use them as well. And once you get into the race, it's not just your racing prowess that decides whether or not you'll win, you also have access to weapons to use. For example, the default rovers you're given have rocket launchers and gatling guns on them. Now, I will say the course is a little bit too long, but it works really well. It uses the inbuilt waypoint system to place checkpoints for you to get to, and once you get to that checkpoint it then shows you where the next one is, not to confuse you. There's also multiple routes to go around, and there's also dynamic objects, such as falling containers and ships, for you to avoid during the course as well. Now, a single lap takes about 10 minutes, and I feel like that's a little long for a race, but it probably doesn't take as long if you didn't roll your vehicle on every single corner. Personally, I blame the vehicle. Obviously, my driving skills are impeccable. Like with the Uranium Heist, I'd really like to give this scenario a go with you guys, because I'm sure it'd be really fun to do a multiplayer race. Especially as it just gives you a vehicle, which means we don't have to worry about any of our guys' building skills, we only have to worry about your driving skills, which I'm sure are nowhere near as good as mine. So if you want to do this scenario, we'll be doing it in my Discord at some point, so join it with the link in the description below. So, why are the scenarios forgotten? Like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't mean they're literally forgotten, as I'm sure most of you watching this video do know the scenarios exist, but very few players play them. 
By looking at the achievements, you can see that the most played scenario is the first jump scenario, which is completed by just about 12% of players. However, the next scenario based achievements are Never Surrender with 0.6% of players completing them and for finishing the Learning to Survive scenario, which is another 0.6% of players have completed. And it only goes down from there. Now, yes, not all the scenarios have achievements, but considering those are the top three, they're probably the three that most people have played. A really easy example to demonstrate this as well is that the bottom eight achievements based on the number of players that completed them are all scenario based achievements. I also did two polls on this channel where I asked people how often they played scenarios in Space Engineers and most of them said once or twice which adds up. As we know a lot of players have played the first jump scenario but it seems like aside from the hardcore player base people haven't played a lot of the others. So why is this? So I think there are a couple of factors of why this could be. First of all, I imagine most players just want to play Space Engineers, but they just want to play a normal survival game and build their own stuff, which is perfectly fine. However, if that's the kind of way you want to play Space Engineers, a lot of the scenarios do actually support you to do this. So maybe it's worth you giving those scenarios a chance. It could also be that a lot of the scenarios are multiplayer focused. This is definitely the case of Uranium Heist and Scrap Race, but Never Surrender, Frostbite and Lost Colony also tout themselves as being able to be played in multiplayer, and they'd probably be a lot more fun in multiplayer as well, as both the story-based scenarios exist in a world where everyone has already gone, and Never Surrender, like I said, it takes a long time between waves, so any way of speeding that up would be cool. I just want to be the guy who stands in the Never Surrender space station and presses the button to skip rounds. Everyone else can kill drones, I just want the achievement, so I'll just press that button and you can carry on. It could also be that a lot of the scenarios are too long. First jump is, like I said, the shortest one, and a lot of people have completed it. Although that could be because it's the top scenario on the list, and also the game's kind of tutorial. But aside from first jump and learning to survive, the rest of the scenarios are really long. Just getting the footage for Never Surrender took me two hours to get to wave 30, and the fact that you need to do 100 of these waves, I don't even think I've got the patience for that. Lost Colony can take up to 12 hours to complete, according to the Space Engineers wiki. Now, I'm not necessarily sure how long Frostbite takes to complete, as I'm sure you can just beeline straight to the ending of this if you feel like it, but Frostbite has a lot of repairing vehicles and stuff to use. Like I spent half an hour at the beginning of this repairing my vehicle and adding turrets onto it, and changing the layout of it, and transferring items around, and oh, too many things, and then to only get blown up two minutes later by a drone. As you can imagine, I was pretty annoyed at that. But again, it, it takes a lot of time to complete these, so I can imagine this is a turn off for some people. Or it could be that, quite simply, people aren't aware of what the scenarios are and haven't bothered to check them out. Like I've said multiple times in this video, everyone is aware that the scenarios exist, but how many of them actually know what is the contents of the scenarios and what you do with them? So I implore you, if anything I've said in this video has piqued your interest in the scenarios, please check them out. So, let me know your guys' opinions of scenarios in the comments below, and was your interest in any of the scenarios piqued because of this video? Also let me know in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe for more Space Engineers content.